can't believe it. I can't believe I'm married six years. I'm still happy. Yeah, well, you're lucky. I think Louise is cheating on me. We're not cheating. We're just good friends. Look, he's worried. <laughs> he's joking. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Pull the cab over. This ain't the address, mister. I know. Be quiet. Sammy. Tony. Who's that singing? Sounds like Vicky. That is Vicky. Who get off here, Cammy? George, pay the man. What? Dollar eighty. Dollar eighty. Fellas. It's her. Would you look at that? It's her. Here in your arms, I'm wealthy tonight. When youth has its flea. happiest couple I ever knew. And the happiest. I thought the third time they would have made it. Vicky and Charlie. Now there's a story. I never told you this? I'm sure I told you. All right, I'm gonna tell you the story and you're gonna think I'm making it up, but I swear this is exactly how it happened. It all started on a warm June night, 1948. My friend, Charlie Pearl, had just announced his engagement to the daughter of the most important producer in Hollywood. Now, for a struggling comic like myself, this was a rare chance to get into a big-time Hollywood mansion, for which I otherwise would have had no chance at all. For Charlie, it was the beginning of the biggest roller coaster ride in the history of modern romance. Adele Horner was a new type dame for Charlie. She had class, education, nice girl. You're the only woman in the world for me, Adele. In the whole world? In as many worlds as they got. But me and the guys just couldn't get over Charlie getting married. I mean, here he is, a good looking guy with millions coming in from the family toothpaste business. To small time bachelors like us, Charlie Pearl was a god. Five feet from where we're sitting, there were three directors I would sell my mother to meet. You sold your mother last year. <laughs> they returned her. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever be funnier than me, sweetheart. <laughs> you know, he's not in love with her, I'll tell you that. How do you know? Well, he might love her, but he's not hot for her. All right, all right, so the hors d'oeuvres are hot. Isn't that enough? Why is he marrying her, then? It's not as if he needs the money. Yeah, and she doesn't need his, so he trusts her. And for Charlie, that's a very hard thing to find, believe me. Charlie, let's not get married unless it's forever. I'm spoiled rotten, and I wouldn't know how to handle disappointment. Every woman I've ever been with has made her living from disappointments. I need somebody good and solid to keep me in check. I'll hold you to that, Charlie. I'll never let you out of my sight. Bite my mouth. Go on. Bite it hard. No, Charlie, I... I don't want to hurt you. You don't get it, Adele. I like it when it hurts. <clears throat> I'm sorry to intrude, but your father would like a few moments with Mr. Pearl in the library. Don't look so worried. He already said yes. He's been known to change his mind. Well, it's too late. I already made up mine. Uh, 
Sit down, Charlie. Thank you, sir. Cigar? No, thank you. Brandon? Not for me, thanks. Is it true, Charlie, you don't smoke or drink? Stains the teeth. That's what my father taught me. <laughs> it makes you look impressive. That's what my father taught me. No vices at all, Charlie? Oh, sure. All the ones that don't stay in the teeth. Well, you got nice teeth. <laughs> How would you characterize yourself, Charlie? As a playboy? I prefer the word sportsman. You don't give a good goddamn about impressing me, do you, Charlie? No, sir. I'm trying like hell to make a good impression on you, but you know everything about me. I spotted those two private detectives you've had tailing me for the last month. Sure, I play the horses, bet on football, baseball, anything that moves or rolls. I've been out with every starlet from Paramount to Warner Brothers, and I've had a dandy time doing it, too. But that was before I met Adele. Is it having $30 million that makes you so cocky? No, I don't think I'm cocky. A little stupid sometimes. No, I don't think you are. Fact is, I don't know what the hell you are. Why did you pick Adele? There's a thousand better looking women in this town you could have by just snapping your finger. You know, I don't think you appreciate your own daughter's qualities, Mr. Horner. She's got style. She's got class. Adele is a thoroughbred, and that is something I know a little bit about. We're not trading horses here, Charlie. We're talking about my one and only daughter, Adele. Now, what is it you really want? To produce movies? Produce movies? No. I'd miss too many ball games. You talk about everything except hard work. Exactly how much schooling have you had? Well, I went to a few Harvard-Yale football games. Look, let's face it. I'm not ambitious. I don't have to be. You know, my mother walked out on us when I was three years old. Never saw her again. So my old man gave me everything, except the mother I didn't have. I love that old guy. And I want to pay him back by settling down. My father made me rich. Now I want to make him happy. You're good, Charlie. You use charm. Like a deal, it uses a fresh deck. There isn't an ambitious writer, actor, or director out there who wouldn't sell his soul to marry Adele. But you present a problem to me because you're lazy and you're independent. How am I going to control you, Charlie? You can't. But Adele, she can make me do handstands. There are two things in this world that matter to me. My daughter and my studio. You hurt my studio and I kill you. You hurt my daughter and you'll pray for me to kill you. Don't give it a thought, sir. I'm not a praying man. Okay. Two days later, we were headed for what was then just a little dusty town called Las Vegas. We were throwing Charlie a bachelor party, a three-day orgy at the Pick-A-Daisy Ranch, where all the daisies wore D-cups, and She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not was the house game. By the time Charlie went on his honeymoon, we'd have Adele carrying him across the threshold. Did I tell you clowns Esther Williams likes one of my songs? Oh, hey, that's terrific. Yeah, MGM wants her to sing it in the next picture. Ooh. Where, underwater? <laughs> Uh, no, shut no, up, no. you. Hey, which song? Haven't we met before? Oh. Haven't we met before? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my song. You promised that to me. So now I promised MGM. Since when does friendship come before career? You little shit. In two years, I'll be MGM's hottest star. Ooh. It's the whip of the backstroke <laughs> in my bathtub to get me one of her pitches. And you <laughs> will kiss my ass before I do one of your songs. I'll kiss it now. I'm not proud. Ben, wait, 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 wait,
No, I'm just saying because you never go near the water because you wear the toupee. I wear yeah. a toupee, you fuckhead? <laughs> you know, I love this guy. He manages the worst fucking baseball team <laughs> hey, in the yeah, minors. I'm sorry? Finishes last. I'm sorry? Three years in a row. Four, 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 years. four years in a row. And now he knows everything about show no, business. No, I, I know one pie is making 20 bucks a month, better rugs on their head than you got oh, right now. Oh, what do you know, Mr. Pineapple Head? Pineapple George, <laughs> can I say something, George? What? what? It's very boring. You're very boring. You want to hang out with us? Get snappy a dialogue. I don't hear Charlie coming up with any snappy a dialogue. Hey, hey. That's different. Charlie's rich. I don't mind if Charlie bores us. Is this fun, Charlie? Is this, is this, would you say, the best time you ever had in your life? Going to Vegas with three and a half funny guys who ah. treat you like an equal, huh? We pretend that we enjoy your company and why? Why do we treat you like an equal, Charlie? Because I pay for everything. Exactly. Oh. You see, the first thing you grab is his hair. Anybody? Oh, I know it's all red. It's a red. Hey, buddy. How long is this going to take? You want it fast? Or you want it to last? <laughs> I'll write the lyrics, Speedy. Just fix the tire, huh? Adele, we have a bad connection. You do? I miss you too, honey. I still say he's not hot for her. About 40 miles outside of Vegas. I'm gonna drop these guys off and head back tonight. I just miss you too much. What did you say? The birds were chirping. I couldn't hear that. I love you. Bye, honey. He's joking. That's what it is. He's joking. Charlie, don't tell jokes. You're not funny. We're funny, not you. It's no joke. I'm going back. Oh. Hey, Charlie, hey. Ah, what is that? I'll take you there. I'll pay for the weekend. I'm going back to L.A. tonight. Charlie, what? I miss her, guys. What are you sitting? Tell, tell, look, tell him what he's missing. Charlie, on my mother's life, these are not just women. They're goddesses. Am I lying, Sammy? Goddesses, Charlie. Any one of them can marry a prince or a duke if they had the money to get to Europe. Big women, Charlie. 6'2", six 6'3", six and there were 12 of them. It's like a mountain of tits. Hey, the tie, hey, the tie. Hey, hey, hey. You guys don't get it. I'm getting married in six days. I'm tired of screwing around. That's all I've been doing my whole life is screwing around. Can I ask you a question, Charlie? Are you hot for Adele? <laughs> I just got finished telling you I'm nuts for her. We're not talking about nuts. Nuts is a different topic altogether. We are now talking about hot. 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 Different than nuts. I've had hot before. Hot always got me into trouble. Hot always cost me a bundle of dough and a kick in the ass. I want a woman I can depend on. Why can't you have both? Because you can't. You guys ever hear of crimes of passion? A hot woman screws up your mind. Guy walks into a room, sees the woman he's in love with in bed with another guy, he writes her off. He catches some guy screwing the woman he's hot for. She's done. Now, we did talk Charlie into stopping off for a few drinks along the way, figuring we could persuade him to join us at the Pick-A-Daisy later. I'll tell you, you can lead a man in love to water, but you gotta drag him to horse around. He's on the phone again. You know, we should have killed this romance when it started. A man in love is a man who dumps his friends. I'm gonna miss Charlie, I swear. Fellas, I have found the one girl in a million. You ask me if I'm hot for her, I'm better than hot for her. I am crazy, nuts, absolutely insane for her. Well, that's great, Charlie, and maybe one day you'll be hot for her, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a young lady I know you're going to enjoy. Adele wants to put my picture on the ceiling, so it's the first thing she sees when she wakes up in the morning. I wish we didn't have to wait six days. Fall in love. 
Sometimes it's, it's good to wait. Who is that? For example. Who is she, Sam? Must be a new kid. Never saw her before. The Dutch in old Amsterdam do it, not to mention the fans, folks in Siam do it, think of Siam. Quality, right, Charlie? She's, um, she's got a good phrase. Her phrasing, it's good. First thing I noticed when she came out was her phrasing. Uh, let's, let's hear her phrase a little more, huh? One more song, okay? One song. Yeah, one encore, one reprise, and, that, and that, that's it. In the privacy of both, do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Come on, baby. There's not much to it. Just come along with me, boy, and get right down to it. Let's fall. No. Just do it. Let's just do it. Love will come later. I gotta get going. Charlie, here's your manners. Did you at least tell the lady how much you appreciate her phrasing? Murder, he says. Sammy, do me a favor. Ask Woody if the lady will join some admirers for a drink. Phil, she'd get a kick out of meeting you, Charlie. Okay, Sam? Can do. If the man says can do, can do. Is that the language of love? No good. Bad idea. No can do. What do you mean, no can do? She won't have a drink with us? She's busy. She's seeing a guy. She spoke for her, okay? Well, let me talk to her. Leave it to me, Charlie. Forget it! She's Bugsy Siegel's girl. That name was not mentioned. Let's go. What's wrong with asking her to have one drink? Nothing. So they'll bury the five of us in the same box. Just pay the check. Leave a very big tip. Just get the hell out of here. I just want to say hello. How are you going to say hello without a tongue? They don't call Bugsy Bugsy because he's friendly. Yeah, grab his arms. Here we go. Don't look back. They got cameras in the scene. You don't think that girl had something special? You're just nervous before the wedding. Suddenly, any gorgeous girl looks good to you. Phil, you don't think that girl is beautiful? I didn't want to say it before. I thought she was a little common. Adele is pretty. This girl. will bring on nobody's murder but his own. Hard to say. Charlie, Charlie, you got to come with us. We need you for the group this time. Get in the car. Guys, you know, it's too late to make back to L.A. Why don't you give the girls at the ranch a break? What do you say? I want to get back to Adele. Charlie. Bust a couple of Broncos for me, guys. We'll see you at the altar. You bet. Can you spot me at 20? You're a very lucky man, Charlie, to have a real lady waiting for you. 
Four slobs like us, we gotta kill three days humping 12 crazy Amazons. See you later, Charlie. Charlie, don't change your mind. Knock them dead. This is already, bud. Come on. He says murder. 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 That's what he said. Is that clock right, 1.30? I guess so. <laughs> You're the first one in Vegas who ever asked me what time it was. Another two sets playing? Sure, why not? How you doing, Charlie? Well, I'm doing just fine, thanks. Lady's talking to me, Chief. Oh. Oh. Well, my name is Charlie, too. <laughs> Honest. I saw your show tonight, all three shows, as a matter of fact. Y you're very good, you know. The lady likes to drink alone. Why don't you show her a little professional courtesy? Charlie. Well, I'm not trying to pick you up. I'm getting married in six days. I couldn't be happier for you. Do we have any peanuts? Yes. Yes, sir. Finally gonna tie the old knot. <laughs> Never thought it would happen to me. I'm up here on a bachelor party. Quiet party. Oh, no, no, I, I left early. Me and the guys, we really... Went wild. No, I was going to drive back to L.A., but I decided to stay and see your last show. Is there an album of yours that I could buy somewhere? Because if there isn't, then I think that somebody around here better open up their eyes, because I think you have one hell of a future. You in show business? No. Toothpaste. No wonder you smile so much. My name's Pearl. Charlie Pearl? Guess. Got to talk her down I'm here. in the columns now and then? Right. Really? Selling toothpaste? I race cars, speedboats, play a little polo. You like polo? You know, I would have thought a guy getting married in six days would behave himself. Am I out of line? Your foot's right on the edge, pal. Excuse me, but this section just closed. If you care to move down to the other end of the bar, we'd be glad to pick up your tab. Have I offended someone? Have I offended you, miss? I don't own this hotel, Charlie. See? No one's complaining. Look, buddy, I asked you nice once. Second time gets ugly. He's harmless, Gus. He's getting married in six days. I just want to make sure the guy shows up, that's all. You got two minutes to finish your drink, then you run out of them. guys must think you're pretty important. My fan club. Listen, I know some influential people in your business. Is there any way that they could sort of get in contact with you? Nope. Well, hey, don't go yet. Don't touch, Charlie. Those guys know how to turn wives into widows. I mean it when I say you're good. You should be making records, playing big clubs. You should be in the movies. I'm gonna save your life. Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're Bugsy Siegel's girlfriend. Jesus. If they hear you call him Bugsy, they'll turn you into a roulette wheel. I'm not brave and I'm not stupid. I've got about 30 seconds to finish my drink before they show me the door. Is there any way that I could see you later on tonight? <sighs> sure. If you don't mind looking up from a grave. Just tell me where to go. He 
wouldn't want to die if you're worth 40 million bucks. 30 million. And I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. I just want to see you later on. Why? Some things are worth risking your life for. You got five seconds to make up your mind. Creeps they let in this joint. <sighs> now, Charlie's brain knew that what he was doing was dumb and dangerous. The problem was his brain was no longer driving the bus. Charlie was about to break the two golden rules. One, never fool around with a gangster's girl. And two, never fool around with a gangster's girl. Where are you? Pulling down the shade would be a smart move. Talk. About what? <laughs> what do you mean about what? I'm risking a bullet in my head to come see you. I I got the impression back there that y you want to see me too. So what do you want to do? Well, uh, a drink would be nice. A little soft music, maybe. About my career. Oh. Well, um, I meant what I said. I could introduce you to some very, very influential people. More important than Benny Siegel. Well, without those two gorillas, Benny Siegel is no more important than the doorman. Doorman opened doors, Charlie. Well, judging from your looks and this bungalow, I think he had some. Well, he gave you this job, but I don't think he's really going to push your career. Whereas I am prepared right now to pick up this phone and get you an appointment with Decker Records. Why would you do that for me? Why did you leave the window open? I don't know. God. Besides, Benny's getting ready to dump me. <laughs> That's what he went to pick up in Chicago. Look, I, I've got to tell you this. I couldn't take my eyes off you in that club. And when I was sitting next to you at that bar, I had to fight to keep my hands off you. You know, sometimes something strange Something special happens between a man and a woman. I mean, she may not be right for him, and he may not be right for her, but it happens anyway. And there's not a damn thing that either one of them can do about it. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Yeah. But don't go away. On the other hand, Adele, the woman that I'm supposed to be married to, now, she is the absolute right woman for me. Lucky Adele. Except I don't want to devour every inch of her flesh the way I want to do right now. You know what I 
I'm talking about? Shut up, Charlie. shape for you, you know what I mean? Uh, me too, baby. Oh, with my heart. <sighs> okay, sure. Bye. <sighs> he has somebody new, all right. Forget about him. <laughs> she was working out on the floor. What'd this guy look like? Pretty, flashy smile. That country club shithead. Well, this is very disappointing to me. You know what I mean? You're an animal. You leave some pretty good teeth marks yourself. Yeah. That girl you're marrying, what's her name? Adele. <laughs> you tell her she's gonna have a short, but a happy life. <laughs> you know, I once swung at a golf ball and thought I missed it clean until I look up and I see it climbing in the sky 200 yards away, still climbing. And then it drops on the green two inches from the pin. That is the only time I've ever felt anything perfect in my whole life. Until right now. <laughs> That's the first time I ever felt like a golf ball. <laughs> I gotta see you again, Vicky. We gotta work it out somehow. That's not my problem, Charlie. Ah. You'll have to take that up with Bugsy. Gee, that's the first time you've ever called me Bugsy. Oh, my God. Um... Oh, this is bad. No, well... This is so bad. I couldn't see much, but it didn't sound good, kid. <laughs> Benny, listen to me. Well, call me Bugsy. Then it'd be an insult to me now. Listen, Mr. Siegel, this is all my fault. She turned me down at the bar. I, I followed her car out here, and, and, and I broke into this room. I, I forced her. I, I swear to God. You know, I believe this to be true. Because Vicky would never do such a thing. No, not to me. No. And so you won. Huh? Gee. You must have ripped her clothes right off. <laughs> you dragged her into this bed, right? Right, yes. Well, I bet she kicked and screamed, right? I mean, she must have begged you, huh? Did she beg you not to do it? And you said what? You said, shut up, baby. Because I'm taking what I want. Right, yes. Th 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 that's exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, sweetheart? Is that the way you did it? Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, no, I'm, I don't... I, I'm so scared. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Gee, this is some ordeal. <laughs> you know what I don't get, kid? Uh, what's your name? Uh, Charlie. Yeah, what I don't get, Charlie, is why. You knew she was my girl, right? Well, then you knew what would happen if you got caught. And you were that hot, Charlie? You were that hot to get into her pants? The what? Charlie. 
Well, I, um, I, uh, I must have been drunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, too much celebrating. I, I was out here on my bachelor party. <laughs> right, right, I heard that, yeah. <laughs> Getting married, huh? That's nice. Congratulations, Tommy. Oh, thank you. So you must be as embarrassed about this whole thing as I am, huh? Embarrassing. All right. I'll tell you what. Why don't you both get dressed? Because I think we have to talk. Let's get an ice cream soda somewhere, shall we? Hmm. We say your old man pay for you, Charlie. Pay for me? You mean as in a ransom? Nah. Ransom, say no kidnap. This is a probable cement job. Huh? A couple of million, you'd think? What? Hmm? I would like to avoid involving my father if I could, Mr. Siegel. He's very old. I see. He's very sick. Mm -hmm. but, but I'll give you whatever I have. Then you're going to pay for Vicky, too. Huh? Or you two kids going Dutch? What? <laughs> hey, Charlie. Benny. Come on. Benny, I'm so sorry. I, I really oh. am sorry, though. I, I... Hey, baby. Level with me. Mm -hmm. Is he really an animal like you say? Well, well, that was just something to say. I mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny, Charlie? Oh, no. Hmm? I'm so scared. <laughs> I mean, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really scared. I, I don't think I've ever been this scared in my whole life. That's good. Well, you just relax, buddy. Just you stop laughing real quick. <coughs> My problem is this, Charlie. Vicky here. She was on the way out anyway. She was a good kid. And I always figured I'd set her up, you know, a little business somewhere, put a few bucks in her bank account. Two years with Benny, huh, baby? Yeah. Just entitles you to a little security, don't you think, honey? Oh, my God. I swear. On the other hand, if a guy screws my girl, Charlie, he's got to pay for it. So why not pay both bills at the same time? Come here. You marry her, Charlie. That takes care of her security, see? And she marries you. Well, then I fuck up your life, because she's no damn good. Everybody gets something this way, see? It's how I run the biggest hotel in Las Vegas. Charlie. Bobby, May, you want to hit her? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I can't marry her. I'm marrying somebody else next week. I know, the Hollywood big shot, his daughter, yeah. You know, I think he reads the morning papers, Charlie. He's going to cancel the caterers. <laughs> yeah. Vicky, come on. Vicky, I'm your animal. Here. Come on. Come on. Step up to the altar. This is crazy. This is what? It, it, it's not that. We, we don't have a wedding license. No. It's okay. I own the chapel. Well, we don't have a ring. No, we don't have I mean... No, that's not right. Give me that one back. No, I've already got it. Give me that one back. No, I've already got it. Give me that one back. No, I've already got it. Give me that one back. This one ain't even right. We're just working out the ring thing. Do you, Victoria Rosemary Anderson, take Charles for your lawful wedded husband? I'm sorry, we can't hear that here in a bag. Speak up, dear. She did. 
And do you, Charles Raymond Pearl, take Victoria to be your lawfully wedded wife for as long as you both shall live? It's not that you're, uh, I really think that you're, uh, the thing is that, yeah, I do. Did you hear that, Mr. Siegel? Perfectly. Then with the power vested in me by the state of Nevada, I now pronounce you man and wife. And no kiss? Where's the kiss? Hey, people, you know, we've seen the other stuff, haven't we? <laughs> we want to see a little kiss. Mm -hmm. Come on, rush it, Tony. I want to make that early addition. No problem. Well, you know what, Charlie? Just got a feeling one day you're gonna wish we gave you that cement, John. <laughs> I just said to the guys yesterday, hot always gets you into trouble. When you're hot for a woman, you can bet it's gonna screw up your life. I didn't rape you, Charlie. I just left the window open a little. It's too bad you don't have the balls in the morning that you had last night. I'm not blaming you. Did I blame you? <laughs> It's my mistake. I'm the one that made the first stupid move, not you. Oh, gee, thanks. Tell me something. Are you always going to be this cheerful in the morning, sweetheart? What mornings? This is the first morning and the last morning. And what I said last night was the truth. It was the greatest experience of my entire life. I want you every time I look at you. I just don't want to be married to you. I just cannot believe that I am driving around in a brand new Packard convertible, married to a man worth $30 million, and I want to throw up. Oh, so I was the only one having a good time last night. Maybe. Do you always moan and scream and drive your fingernails into the back of somebody that you're bored with? No. No, I really had a terrific time last night, Charlie. It's just that I haven't been happy since we got married. And we'll get in a null as soon as we get back to L.A. Is that fast enough for you, lover boy? No. We can do it quicker. I have a lawyer friend in Palm Springs. We'll be there in 20 minutes. Fine. Fine. Does breakfast go with that? Look, I'll make good. I'll come up with some kind of a settlement. 10, 20,000, whatever you want. Don't treat me like a bimbo, Charlie. It's my wedding day. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm really sorry. Studio Princess for Lounge Singer. Those will do. I wonder what it would cost to buy up every copy in L.A. If she loves you, she'll wait for you. The father's probably waiting for me, too. Thank you. I wish I was dead. Thanks. Hey! Coming? I don't think so. <laughs> Where are you gonna go? You, you don't have any money, you don't have a car, you don't have any clothes. Come on, I'll set you up in LA, let's go. You know, you guys are all alike. There are two things I'm gonna do from now on, Charlie. I'm gonna earn my own living and I'm gonna keep my windows shut. So long, Charlie. Three months? You want Adele Hona to wait three months until you get annulled from some cheap, blonde, bombshell, bimbo cocktail waitress? She's not a cocktail waitress. She sings with a band. And I've been trying to tell you, we did not get married of our own free will. We... 
were kidnapped and forced to get married at gunpoint. At gunpoint? What is that? A new crime wave? They grab people on the street and make them get married? Are you listening to this? I warned you about them, didn't I? Nobody gets forced to get married at gunpoint except hillbillies. And you're no hillbilly, you pervert, polo playing goddamn playboy. Do I look stupid to you? No, sir. Do I look like a schmuck to you? No, sir. Bugsy Siegel may be crazy, but stupid he's not. Those people out there, they kill for power, for money. But this thing he did, he did for revenge. For talking to his ex-girlfriend, he might break your legs. You got broken legs, Charlie? No, sir. So what else did you do besides talk to her? Well, sir, the rest of the story contains certain indelicacies which are best discussed among men. Indelicacies? We sent out 400 wedding invitations. The governor and both senators are flying it from Washington. On this morning's front page of the Los Angeles Globe is a picture of you, Bugsy Siegel, and the bimbo getting married in some Las Vegas quickie wedding chapel. On page 12 of the same paper is the announcement of the engagement of my daughter to the same man whose fucking wedding picture is on page one. And you want to talk to me about indelicacies. I can see you really don't want to hear my side of the story, sir. <laughs> They're laughing at me this morning at every studio in this town. I make family pictures for families who bring their kids. Children sing songs and buy toy bunny rabbits and baby ducks that go quack in my pictures. I break your ass, you fucking little shithead. Get out of my house, you hot horny bastard, before I kick you the hell out. I'm sorry, Adele. Don't talk to him. I know you'll probably never forgive me. She for this. doesn't fucking forgive you. I'd like to explain it to you one day. Get the fuck out of here! I'm not gonna give up trying, Adele, because I'm still in love with you. Mr. Horner, we'll talk. Better start eating at home, you little creep, because you won't get into a restaurant in this city. You won't get a table, a chair, a plate, a fork, a glass of water, a piece of lettuce that dropped off a tree. You're through in this town, Pearl. You're a dead man. In tomorrow morning's obituaries, I'm putting in, died today, Charles Raymond Pearl of Boston, cause of death, a fucking flaw in his fucking character. With you, swing with you, This thing, it'll pass. Maybe not in our lifetime, but it'll pass. I know I can do it. Well, Tony, if you can't handle it, I'll give it to Frank. I'm ouch. Nah, he's not eating. You gotta eat, Charlie. I'm not hungry. You gotta get out more, Charlie. You can't stay cooped up out here on the patio looking out at the same panoramic view every night. Hey, forget it, Charlie. No woman is worth starving for, huh? Just another broad. Adele Horner is no broad. I thought you were thinking of Vicky. Charlie, have you, have you even heard from her? Vicky? No, Adele. No, they won't put my calls through. I hear she's in San Diego. Adele? No. Vicky. She's singing in some joint. I just can't get that woman out of my mind. Which one? Excuse me, Mr. Charlie. There's a lady here to see you. Even money, it's Adele. Uh-huh. I'll take a C note on the song, Bert. You got my letter? Oh, I hate you so much. Because I'm still in love with you. Partly because you're so bad. And partly because you're so honest. I don't know another man who'd admit to his future wife that he'd slept with another woman six days before their wedding. Six days! I think Mr. Siegel let you off easy. If I had walked into that room and saw you in bed with that woman, I would have shot you and her on the spot, especially her. And then 
You go and you write all these loving things to me on the last page. And I don't know what to think. Do you still want to marry me, Charlie? Yes, Adele, yes. Oh, why? Because I'm still in love with you. Well, then why did you sleep with her? You won't like my answer. We'll say it anyway. I just had to have her. You're right, I hate it. Do you still see her? No. Do you still want her? No. Don't lie. A little, but it'll go oh, away. Charlie. Marry me, Adele, and I'll never see her again, and I'll stop wanting her, I swear. You're still lying, Charlie. Not to me, but to yourself. I'm going to Europe with my father for three months. You should be free from that person by then. I'll be home on September 9th. You can call me on September 10th. Goodbye, Charlie. And so Adele went to Europe to think, and Charlie buried himself in his work. Well, playboy work. But uh, his heart just wasn't in it. <laughs> If Adele didn't come home soon, there wouldn't be much of Charlie to come home to. Then, finally, it came. September 10th. The morning line on Adele saying yes was 8 to 5. I took the odds and bet on Cupid. Oh. Did you miss Adele, Charlie? Yes, sir. Have you been behaving yourself? Yes, sir. You haven't been seeing anyone you shouldn't be, have you? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. No, sir. I was young once myself, Charlie. And I also made some big mistakes in my time. But I did everything I could to rectify those mistakes. I understand, sir. It would take you 1,200 years to rectify yours, Charlie. That's a long time to wait to start a family. Yes, sir. So here's the deal. You get married one week from tonight. A simple ceremony. No guest, quiet as a grave. A retired judge will do it in my study. The servants will be given the night off. Taking no chances on another scandal. You understand? Perfectly, sir. What other item? I want you to put up a half a million dollar bond to be held in escrow. At the end of the ceremony, it'll be returned to you. But if you don't show up, you'll be the generous benefactor of a local orphanage. Is that acceptable to you? It's not to me. I don't think I should have to buy someone to marry me. Sweetheart, he's not being bought to marry you, but he's paying up if he doesn't. That's acceptable to me, sir. The final item. Not a word of this wedding to anyone. If there's a leak or a breath of a rumor, it's off. You have my word, sir. You put the check on the desk in my library. You make it out to the Culver City Boys' Orphanage. I regret using such foul language at our last meeting, Charlie. It was uncharacteristic of me. I deserved it, sir. I'll see you here one week from tonight. If not, the next time you go on a honeymoon, you'll go as a eunuch. Okay. Two nights later, Tony was opening at the San Pay Club with a couple of new songs that Sammy had written just for him. So it's a big night for everybody. Very big. So what happened with Adele? Nothing much. I spoke to her. She's fine. I can't get a word out of this guy. Come on, Charlie, something's cooking. I can tell. Nothing, I swear. It's not my night. It's not my night. Everything's going wrong. Tony's nervous because the MGM people didn't show yet, and then the opening act cancels on us. 
laryngitis. Oh, honey, what a shame. No opening act. Wasn't he, 20, 30 minutes? All right. Look, I would do this for Tony, nobody else. All right, relax. They got somebody else. Just sit down. Oh, really? Ladies and gentlemen, the management regrets Miss Amber Wayne will be unable to appear, but delights presenting in her first Los Angeles appearance, Miss Vicki Anderson. Mm -hmm. Odds are when this happening? Impossible to one. Every honeybee fills with jealousy when they see you out with me. I don't blame them. Goodness knows. Honey, a suckle. to me. Charlie, isn't that the girl? Ow! Charlie, I didn't know it was gonna be her, I swear. I gotta get out of here. Miss, Miss Tony's opening, you, he'll never forgive you. If Lou Horner finds out that she and I are in the same nightclub, he's gonna call the whole thing off. Call what off? That's it? That's it? I know it. You and Adele are getting married. Not unless I beat it out of here right now. <laughs> Sam, tell Tony I got sick. What's wrong with him? Slight heart attack. You just have to touch my cup. You're my sugar. It's sweet when you stir it up. When I'm taking sips from your tasty There was no window, so I decided to use the door. So how are you? I'm okay. I see you didn't have any trouble uh, getting back on your feet. I really shouldn't be here talking to you. Yeah. Usually gets us in trouble. Oh, God. I'm so glad. Here, here, let me help you with that. I guess I shouldn't be telling you this either, but I'm supposed to be getting married on Tuesday. Well, good for Adele. She hung in there. Yeah. So how about you? Charlie? Uh, I, I mean, are you, are, you, are you seen anybody? I've only been in all two weeks. What's the rush? Yeah. Uh, Tony's gonna kill me if I don't get out there and see the show. Your life has always been threatened. Isn't it, Charlie? I really gotta go. I... I just wanted to drop by and say hello. I think the real reason I, I came by was to see if I could be around you and still want to get married. I guess I'm reasonably safe. Well, you know how I like to see you happy, Charlie. Well, bye.
You know, I was, I was just thinking, thinking that, that maybe. Well, I thought that maybe. Well, I'm, could... Me too. I, I was thinking that if you weren't going to be too long, maybe I could uh, give you a ride home. I have a car. Mine's bigger. driving me crazy what did I do baby whatever did I do my tears for you they make everything hazy clouds in the sky that used to be blue how true were the friends who were near me to cheer me believe me they knew but you were the kind who would hurt me, desert me when I needed you. Yeah, you, baby, you, you're driving me crazy. What did I do? Did I do to you? true when the friends who are near me to cheer me believe me they knew but you were the kind who would hurt me desert me when i needed you yeah you yeah 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 you you're driving me crazy what did i do tell me what did i do to you please what did i do That just cost me a half a million bucks. No, mister. That was just for old time's sake. I don't think so. You know it, and I know it. It's gonna be like this for the rest of our lives, Vicky. When you walked away from me that day, flat as a penny, without a red cent, I couldn't believe it. I said to myself, if I had a woman like that, I would want to spend the rest of my life with her. Charlie, do you really love me? I mean, really love me? Because when you walked out of my dressing room and I thought you were never coming back, I've never been this happy in my entire spoiled, rotten life. It was a beautiful wedding, and in my opinion, even better than the first. Better entertainment. I was the best man. I did 40 minutes of baffle material. It was beautiful, not to brag. Tony sang a little song that Sammy wrote for the occasion called The Girl That I Married and Married. The other girls, all being single, naturally cried at the wedding. And somewhere else in Hollywood, someone was crying more than anybody. He's dead. The man is dead. I'll get pictures of him dead and you can pin them on your wall and throw darts at them. Last time he tells us he got married at gunpoint. What did they have this time? A cannon up his ass? Mr. Pearl? Oh, we're almost done packing. I'll call you in a couple of minutes to pick up the bags. Thanks. We got a going away gift for you from a friend. Hey, wait a minute. 
fellas. If he can pay you, I'll pay you double. You already paid us double. Huh. Charlie? Uh. that he's seeing you in the first place. Where are we going, fellas? I said, I'm sorry about the honeymoon. Oh, that's okay, honey. It's the second time you had to have one. What did you say? I, ca I can't hear you. Excuse me. Oh. oh, they're beautiful. What is this? Flowers, Mr. Pearl, from the Culver City Boys Orphanage. Morning at 8 o'clock, I start to take swimming lessons. I lose Esther Williams to Fernando Lamas at the end of the picture, but what the hell. Original score by Frank Lesser, additional songs by Sammy Fine. That's great, Sam. It gets greater. Me, Fred Astaire, Rita Hayworth, and one picture. Co-starring? Better. I play a funny taxi driver. I got one dynamite scene. I let Fred and Rita carry the heavy plot, right? I'm no dope. Terrific, Hey, guys. let's not forget George. He's already got Cincinnati in seventh place. They went four games in a row. And Charlie's got Vicky. Everybody finishes in the money, right? I gotta go and call Vicky, guys. She had an audition today at Paramount. I want to see how she made out. I could tell him how she made out. Nobody's hiring any wives of Charlie Pearl in this town. The irony is, if he married Adele, Vicky would be working today. Oh, tell him that. Tell him about irony. He loves stories about irony. <laughs> It's a musical. I mean, a really big musical. Oh. Oh. oh, I've got to learn two songs by Wednesday. I've got to take some really fast dancing lessons. Oh, Charlie, if I could just show them what I could do. If I could just show them. What's wrong? I'm leaving for Boston in two hours. What? My father had a stroke. I don't think he's going to last out the week. thought about him dying. He just didn't seem the type, you know what I mean? Did you talk to him? No, not really. He's on oxygen. Just a couple of words. What did he say? He said he wants to meet you. He said he's not going anywhere until he meets his daughter. Even after everything's read about me? Especially. I'll tell him that you wanted to go. I'm going with you. I'll start packing. I'll call Monogram. I'm sure they'll postpone the test for a few no. days, honey. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, there were 10 other girls. It was a long shot anyway. Well, I'll make it up to you somehow, honey. I swear. Hey, I'm just glad he wants to meet me. When they got to Boston, Charlie's father was in a coma. Well, they watched and waited and waited and watched for five solid days just for the old man to meet Vicky. 
Honey, is it okay if I go to the bathroom? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. So Charlie lost his father, and Vicky lost the part at Monogram. The girl who got it? Bugsy Siegel's new girl. Yeah, the one he dumped Vicky for. You know what the odds are on that? You couldn't place the bet. I'm real sorry he never got to meet you. Yeah. He had a real nice face. So gentle. Well, he was in a coma. So when are we going home? Oh, I got some business things I gotta take care of. I am the president of the company now. So when can we leave? Oh, I don't know. I'd say in about two years. Well, after that, we don't have to spend seven or eight months a year here. Two years? Honey, the company isn't doing well. I didn't know that. If I don't go to work, Vicky, we could lose everything. Two years! Vicky, you've got to give me at least a year and a half. Look, if a picture comes up, you go to L.A. and you do it. The rest of the time, you stay here. Pictures don't come up in Boston, Charlie. You don't get to do screen tests in Massachusetts. You don't meet directors and producers on Plymouth Rock. Hard enough time trying to get into the studios when I was there every day. And why was that, Charlie? Why was that? It's a tough business. Yeah. Especially when you're married to the guy who dumped a Dale Horner. Right. Oh. Right. Oh. And who did I dump her for? Isn't that worth two years of your life? Is it such a torture to live in a place like this? Hey, this is high society, kid. It doesn't get any higher. I just want a chance to do it on my own. Well, I can understand that. All I want is what's coming to me. Look, you're good at singing. I'm very good at inheriting money. I may be the best in my field. I just don't want to be without you. But I'll leave it up to you. Whatever you decide is fine with me. You know I can't be without you two years. Oh, God. So they stayed, and Vicky began the pleasant process of fitting into Boston. A lot of parties, lots of new clothes, a lot of hats. I, I recall she mentioned hats. Meanwhile, Charlie became obsessed with saving the family business. He was determined to make the old man proud. Vicky, she spent her nights alone waiting for Charlie. Well, he was very busy. He was making major, important business decisions. He's a little more mint, guys. Tell me, Vicky, darling, how long have you been here now? Vicky, darling. Oh, are we uh, two years? We've been here two years. Carl and I were married just about two years when our sex life died. We had a small funeral. It was lovely. Charles is having an affair with his secretary. What? <laughs> no, no, darling. My Charles, not your Charles. No. No, I didn't think. Everything is all right with you two, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We're fine. He, he's just uh, <laughs> a little busy. Mm-hmm. Busy. Just have to finish these reports, dear. Hi. Hi. 
What you doing? I gotta get through these reports. How much longer? A couple of hours. Oh, Charlie. I miss you so much. I miss you too, baby. How does that feel? That feels great, baby. Do you know where my hand is? Not now, honey, okay? Maybe later. Not later, Charlie. Now! Ow! What are you doing? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with us? What's happening to us? Nothing's happening. Yeah, exactly, nothing. What are you talking about? Where's that crazy feeling you used to have about me? Where is it, Charlie? It's gone. No, it's not. Don't lie. Oh, a little, but it'll come back, I swear. Hey, this happens to everybody. Charlie, we don't even touch each other anymore. Remember how you used to love to touch me? I still do. No, you don't, Charlie. No, we've been here two years. Please get us out of here before it kills us. Please. You can't expect me to get up and walk away from such an important part of my life. I did. Vicki, the board of directors is trying to squeeze me out. I've put everything we own into the stock options of this company. If I leave now, we'll lose everything. And if you stay, you'll lose me. I kept my side of the bargain. What's it going to be, Charlie? Christmas 1950 was not a happy time for Charlie Pearl. They were divorced for the second time, and somewhere fate was laughing. Then spring arrived, and tragedy struck one of our own. Sammy announced he was getting married, so we drove back to the Pickadaisy Ranch. Well, Bugsy Siegel had been bumped off, so we figured the state of Nevada was now safe. Even Charlie made the trip west, and boy, was he a load of laughs. Hey, somebody tear Charlie up. He's giving me the creeps. Leave the man alone, he's grieving. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm getting married. Then why'd you say yes? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think she had a hypnotist come over while I was sleeping. So what do you think about Adele, Charlie? What? You didn't hear? She eloped to Mexico with her chauffeur. Oh, yeah. Lou Horner cut her off without a cent. You are kidding me. They say two out of every four marriages ends in divorce. The other yeah. two are suicides. But I, <laughs> hey, I wonder where she is now. Adele? She's in Mexico with the chauffeur. No, Vicky. Hey, we haven't played that game in years. You're so crazy about that woman? Vicky. Right. But then, one day, it stopped. Just like that. Why? Why? Because you're a man, Charlie. <laughs> and men are crazy, fucked up sons of bitches. Hey, man. We want what we can have, and then when we have it, we don't want it anymore. You should know. <laughs> look at him. Look, look at me. I am going to a whorehouse so I can get hot for my wife on our honeymoon, who I already shtup 1,200 times. Nuts! We're all nuts! Sammy, Sammy, you're not the first. What? Lots of guys stooped your wife 1,200 times. I did. <laughs> See? The first person we asked. <laughs> huh? No, that is not What's funny. What's not funny? I'm kidding. I joke. Hey, come slow up. I come from a lot. Just slow up. Oh, no. I don't believe it. Are this. you serious? Do you know what the odds are on this happening? Predictable. One. Just one drink. No, no, no. no, 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 no every time we stop by for a drink, you got to get married a couple of times. I just want to wish you good luck. Tie it on a rock and throw it through the window. I'm so glad that I ain't no fool no more. I'm so glad that I ain't no fool no more. God, she's 
still looks great, huh? Oh, well, I don't mean that great, Charlie. She looks good. Nice. Regular. My mom wants me to marry a multi-millionaire. But I just want somebody who can handle me with care. All right, so now you've seen it, don't look anymore. Hey, remember that story in the Bible? You're gonna turn into a box of salt. What? It's a biblical story, you could check. So it's over. Finito, kaput, huh? Come on, fellas, let's go. Hey, we didn't order no champagne. Compliments to Mr. Donato. Who's Mr. Donato? Number one man at the hotel. Look at this. They went from bugsy to crazy. Listen, pal, you tell Miss Anderson we'd like her to join us for a glass of this champagne. John, what are you doing? Shh, after the set is over. I'm sorry, sir. Miss Anderson doesn't drink with guests. Hey, hey! Pal, this is not a guest. This is Charlie Pearl. He was both her husbands. You understand? I'm sorry. Mr. Donato's orders. She's taken up with Gus? I should have known that these cheap Vegas punks were always her style. And what do you care, Charlie? This girl is a minor leaguer. She had a shot at the big leagues, could not hit the fastball, huh? Not wrong. I don't care if you're young or if you're old. Let's get out of here. Smart. The face is getting a little puffy, you notice that? On my mother's life, I was gonna say that, but I, I, I was afraid to. If you Put on a few pounds in the hips, you notice the hips too? Charlie, in two years, you couldn't fit her into a freight elevator. <laughs> I wish you had a couple of sandwiches in the mouth. Absolutely. I swear. You got rid of it just in time, Charlie. Believe me. Hey. Where's Charlie? Maybe. Stop at the John. Alone? Why did you go with him? I don't go to the John unless I got to do something. What's the matter with you? Hi. Hey, hey, be very careful, fellas. <laughs> Bye. So this is what you left Boston for? I thought you gave me up for something better than this. I like it here, Charlie. So, how's the toothpaste business? You having fun thinking up next year's flavors? <laughs> At least that's next year's. You went back to last year's. You like working with Gus as much as you like working with Bugsy? Excuse me while I get my divorce papers so I can see where it says that you have the right to ask me personal questions about my life, okay? I don't have to be married to you still to be worried about you. In the sex, 10 seconds is all you got. Then I call the boys. One, 100. The boys? Oh, that's cute. What is happening to you, Vicky? I mean, is Gus the one slipping in your side window now, or does he still have a key to the front door? Nobody's laid their hands on me since the day you stopped laying your hands on me. Now get your hands off me. I don't know how that happened. But you changed on me. And who changed me, Charlie? If you wanted Adele, why didn't you marry her in the first place? <laughs> or the second? I made a mistake. But I gave you enough money not to have to play a crummy place like this. <laughs> All right. All right, maybe it is over between you and me. Maybe. You can go to the casino and bet on it. I just don't want you to throw your whole life away, you understand? I've already thrown away two years of my life, Charlie, in Boston, giving dinner parties for 22 dead people. You really are a tramp, you know that? Well, you love the tramp in me, Charlie. Then you kissed it goodbye when you made me raise my pinky holding a teacup. <laughs> you won't make me ashamed of myself. I can't be bought by you or anybody. <laughs> I can't believe you did. What the hell are you doing? Hey, put that. Jesus Christ! Hey, wait! You wouldn't dare. Okay. Come on. Come on. I dare you. Come on. I can't believe you did that! Oi, right, wait! I'm going! But I'm taking you with me! Stop! Really 
cute. You know, why is it you don't ever seem to listen, huh? Didn't you hear the waiter out there? You need my permission to see the star. Gus, why don't you go out to the bar and try to look like Bugsy? You know, once I was nice enough to give you a warning, I'm not that nice anymore. Who's your tailor, Gus? This suit, it looks like the lining to a better suit. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Don't, don't! He's, he's leaving! Count to three before I go, Gus. Can you count that high, Gus? Shut up, Charlie! Just shut up! You know what I hear, Gus? Keep talking, Playboy. I can do this all night. I hear you go out to the cemetery and kiss where Bugsy's ass used to be. That's what Vicky told me, Gus. He ain't that right, honey. I'm gonna ask you one question to me. Answer better be yes. You are never, ever gonna come around and bother Vicky again. Is that right? Yes! Yes, he promises! Uh, is that right? Yes, yes, yes! Oh, oh I hated doing oh. that. You idiot! You wanted to get us killed or what? No, I was trying to get you fired! Oh. You guys ever grab anywhere else? I bet you he's already proposed to her. Oh. Jesus, it's a massacre. All right, uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, somebody get Vicky out of here. I'll do that. Right, That'll be right. my job. Hey, there are four of us and only one of you. I think he likes the odds, George. Go on, you might need to. They're, they're much better off without me. Believe me when I say that. This, you know, this is, uh, it's not my forte. Oh, my God. Oh, that sounds good. That's a good sound. Get That's, they're working it out. Sweetheart. Oh, my God. Let's get out of here. Come with me. Ah! 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 Hey, 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 Thank you, with a great time. It's God's curse on me for wanting to get stopped again. Can't you pull down a side street, Schnuckelhead? Wait, it's all desert. Make a right near the billboard. There's no road there. Just do it! Vicky! Hey! I can't see a damn thing. Oh, oh. This is like looking for a ballpark in the minor leagues. Oh. 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 Listen, if there's a bus stop around here, I'd like to be let out. Make another right. Where? Anywhere. You, you can't make a right anywhere. It has to be somewhere. Oh, God. Ah! Ah! What are you doing? Come on, we got him, Gus. Shut up. Tony, get him. Oh! Tony! Hey, do we got him, Gus? Shut up, shut up. Oh. Who got killed, them or us? Seriously. Station doesn't open till 7. We got us some rooms. Oh, I'm surprised they took us without reservations. These were werewolf stuff on camping trips. They only had two. Night. All right, give me that. Five guys in one room? Hey, you're lucky. In the minor leagues, the whole team sleeps in one room. I get a bed. I
Where were you? I'm freezing. Close the window. Oh, thank you, baby. I missed you so much. Stop right there. Is it back? That old feeling that you'll go nuts if you don't get to touch me. We have to talk first. Stand over there. I mean, what's changed, Charlie? I still want to be a singer. You still want to be chairman of the board. Somebody's got to give up something. I gave up my stock options. I sold my house. I left all that behind. I went crazy without you, baby. And I took that job in Vegas. Because I knew it was the one place that you'd find me. I never would have stopped looking. Charlie, this is a curse. I mean, it's okay to love somebody, but it's neurotic to think you can't live without them. I read that in Reader's Digest. I want you back. We'll live in L.A. You can sing, you can dance, you can act, you can juggle, you can do whatever the hell you want to do so long as we're together. Please. You won't regret it. I promise, Charlie. Look at you. Let's get married in the morning, baby. Ah, oh, shit, Charlie. I don't want to get married again. Well, we've rehearsed it twice. We're practically professionals by now. What's the problem? Do you, Charles Raymond Pearl? I do. Take Victoria to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Uh, not yet. For as long as you both shall live. Uh, now. I do. If the man says can do, can do. And do you, Victoria Rosemary Anderson, take Charles to be your husband, in sickness and in health, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, so long as you both shall live? I don't think she's coming out of the gate. The filly's nervous. Never a winner on this track. Take your pitch and swing, baby. I do. Then was the power vested in me by the state of Nevada, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. It was the happiest day of my life. I always love these days, too, Charlie. I really do. Hey, hey. Yay! Out of Charlie. <laughs> the greatest comeback in marital history. Good luck, babe. Thank you. After Sherry and I get married, we're gonna get divorced. This is so romantic. No. <laughs> And so the happy newly, newly, newly weds drove off into the sunset where, you would imagine, they lived happily ever after. Truth? They drove straight to a walnut grove in Culver City, California. See, for the first time in his life, Charlie had plans. This is it. This is what? This is ours. 26 acres. I bought it. It'll be finished in nine months. Charlie, not another big house. Not a house. A movie studio. Pearl Productions. I'm gonna make movies just for you, baby. Uh, Charlie, what do you know about making movies? <laughs> What's to know? You buy a movie camera, you put some film in it. I point the camera at you, and America falls in love with you. Just the way I did. Pearl Studios cost 15 million bucks. Lucky coincidence, because that's all the money Charlie had left. And nine months later, a star was about to be born. Except, it came out a baby. Unbelievable. But this didn't stop production, no siree, because with hard work and perseverance, 11 months later, they had another baby. Finally, Charlie found the right property for Vicky. 
a big budget musical extravaganza. And when Vicky heard the news, she was so excited, she had twins. Charlie was never happier in his life. He had Vicky, he had a family, he had a home. The only thing he didn't have was the studio, which went bankrupt. You know, there's an old saying in Hollywood, you can't make hits unless you make pictures. Vicky got back to her singing, only this time to support the family. You see, Charlie was finding out there were not a lot of job opportunities for ex-millionaire playboy toothpaste kings. And all the influential people he had known, I'm talking about guys he had picked up countless tabs for, now wouldn't give Charlie the time of day. As Vicky's star climbed higher and higher, Charlie's crashed and burned. Nineteen fifty-four found the rest of us riding the tail of a comet. Oh, Tony and me were starring with La Hayworth. Sammy had a hit musical on Broadway, and George had Cincinnati in second place. Now, about a year passed, and another one of our brave comrades fell. Tony Madden, now MGM's biggest star, was finally caught in that evil spider's web that traps us all. Marriage. He not only got the girl, he bought Lou Horner's house. I'm telling you, irony. Irony everywhere. I wonder if she knows it's a toupee. You mean that's not his real hair? No, it is, but when it fell out, he had it made into a toupee. Look at these four guys sitting over there. Look at this. That's us seven years ago. <laughs> you think they'll make it as big as we did? Nah, we're the last of our breed. Isn't one of your friends still missing, darling? Oh, Charlie. Charlie, Pearl, and Vicky. They'll be here, don't worry. They're awfully late. I hope there's nothing wrong. Nah. Probably just stopped off to have another kid. Sorry, I couldn't buy you a new dress for the party tonight. Charlie, I've only had this a year and I've worn it twice. <clears throat> Never thought a wife of mine would wear costume jewelry. It's not even good costume jewelry. You don't like this bracelet? I love it. Who cares? It looks better than the real stuff anyway. <clears throat> Let's not go. It's gonna be a boring party. The same jokes, the same songs, the same faces. I'm so sick of these people. These guys were a lot more laughs when they were bums. We've missed the last three parties. You gotta stop hiding from your friends, Charlie. They're your friends. Hiding from my friends? I'm not hiding from my friends. Okay, never mind. No, Let's wait. Go. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What, what do you mean by that? Hiding from my friends. Never mind. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. I want an answer to my question. Just let go. What did you it. mean I'm hiding from my friends? What did you mean by that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Charlie. You just. You just had a little run of bad luck, that's all. A run of bad luck? Yes. I've had a fucking marathon. Why don't you go to the party by yourself, okay? No, There'll be a I... lot of successful people in there like you. You can you can compare your reviews and variety, how many club dates you've had this week, how many times your names have been in the columns this month, okay? I didn't ask you to build the studio, Charlie. I didn't say make me a movie star. I just wanted to sing. That's all I wanted to I mean, do is just sing. You stop me from making an ass of myself. What, what the hell mean? did I know about making movies? Huh? Oh. I mean, a husband and wife are supposed to look out for each other. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? I mean, Can why I did you stop me from writing all those checks to every creep who came along looking for a lovesick sucker, which You're is what not. I am? Am I right? Oh. I mean, I pulled you out of that place in Vegas, didn't I? And you're never going to let me forget that, are you, Charlie? How you pulled me out of Vegas and made me respectable. And then I go work my ass off and gain a little self-respect while bringing up your kids. But you can't take that, can you, Charlie? What do you want? You want me to stay at home? I can be a wife. I can be a bimbo. But it's your choice, Charlie. What do you want? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm the bimbo here. I mean, I'm a kept man. No. Do you know where this party is tonight? This is in the house that Adele Horner lived in. 
a place where I was treated like a king once. And tonight, there are waiters making more money at this party than I made all of last year. I had my life going exactly the way I wanted it to go. That's what I gave up for you. What did you say, Charlie? What you gave up for me? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, where are you going? What you gave up for me, Charlie? I don't need you. Ever. Hey, you come back here. Hey, wh where do you think you're going? You come back here and you get in this car, do you hear me? Come back here, God damn it, you owe me the rest of your life! What about my kids? I'm not giving up my kids! I don't want my kids to have a revolving door as a father. We have more anniversaries than we do birthdays. I'm a great father. I love being a father. Too bad you don't love being a husband. Look at me, Charlie. Look at me. Because it's the last chance you're ever going to get. You burn in hell. And they got divorced a third time. And Bugsy Siegel burned in hell. Charlie knew he'd blown it. He never made it to the party. In fact, as 1955 became 1956, none of us heard from or even about Charlie Pearl. Vicky packed the kids in her van and moved up to San Francisco. I never told you this. Well, that's, that's where me and the guys found her. What good is money if your heart isn't light? She's singing with more, more heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's called loneliness. When youth has its fling. Jesus, I don't believe it. What? Charlie. It's Charlie. Holy Moses. You know what the odds are on this happening? Even money. We have the right to laugh at them all. Come on, let's go. Charlie, it's us. It's Tony. <laughs> hey, fellas. It's nice to see you. Where you been, Charlie? Oh, I've been around. Around where? What have you been doing? I got into this new business they got up here. What business? It's called computers. Hey, does Vicky know you're here? Oh, yeah. I come in here three, four times a week. You, you two, you're not, you know, together. No, no. She's a tough nut to crack, you know. If we're rich or we're poor, fortune. Are you okay, Charlie? Yeah. I'm fine. You been drinking, Charlie? Me? <laughs> drinking? You know I don't drink. Hey, fellas. I'm gonna show you something. Look at that. Oh, my. Beauties, huh? <laughs> they all look like their mom.
to dazzle her, Charlie. What's the occasion? <laughs> I'm gonna pop the question, what do you think? Tonight. Yeah. Charlie, answer me something. Why, why do you want to marry the same woman four times? It fits. Even though our castles crumble and fall, we have a right to laugh at them all. For love is still king. Love is the got divorced again. Vicky kept on singing her heart out, and curiously enough, Charlie's hunch about that computer thing actually paid off. Yeah, he now owns a small county in Northern California. Well, they needed a big yard for all those kids. Like Charlie says, there are couples in love, and there are couples who are hot. And then there's him and Vicky. They got both. You know what the odds are on that? Big, very big. Extremely very big. <laughs> <laughs> 